If you are a regular watcher of ups and downs, I just want to say thank goodness those last few days are out the way. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just go check in with ups and downs from Raw and you will understand. This is the first time in a while I've been like, thank my life, Smackdown has been moved to the weekend. Let's not worry about that. Nobody needs to know about my problems. And what you do need to know about is how did it go down on AEW Dynamite last week? Did All Elite Wrestling smash it out of the park? Or has it finally all fallen down and exploded in everybody's faces? And this, you know, it is professional wrestling. You're always kind of in the back of your mind going, are we about to go really, really bad? Let's find out. Finger of power, we up those downs. intriguing start to the show this week. After an AEW full gear recap, we cut to the back and there was Kenny Omega being tended to by a doctor and he looked like he'd been cut up by a cheese grater. He was told in no uncertain terms, I'm sorry Ken, there is no way you can compete at the moment and while he understood, he also inquired about the state of John Moxley and was told, well, he was pretty beat up too but he's been given the green light. That then did lead to a match between John Moxley and Michael Nakazawa, and my word did we find out where Nakazawa is in the AEW hierarchy. I mean, he got absolutely destroyed here. It lasted around about 3.4 milliseconds. Paradigm shift, one, two, three. Moxley then grabbed a microphone and let us know in no uncertain terms that he is going to murder everybody on the roster. I mean, that's basically what he said. He looked right into the camera and said, nobody wants to face me. And if you do, you better call your loved ones and tell them you're not coming home. Because again, he wants to go out there and just make sure they stop breathing because he is a bonkers Barry. But look, we have now established this new John Moxley character. He is an absolute madman and I quite like it. You know, I want to see where this is going to go. Uh, also credit to Omega for looking absolutely devastated that he wasn't allowed to wrestle whereas Moxley was. I like this story. It was in the Dark Order versus Marco Stunt and Jungle Boy, and I don't know, man, I don't like being this guy. I don't want to be an asshole. I don't want to be a dick. But as I have said before, there's just something about the Dark Order that isn't quite clicking. On the flip side, though, you've got the Jurassic Express, who I think could be some of the biggest stars in the whole company. And of course, because this was a tag match, at around about the 4 minute 33 second mark, that's usually when it happens, you heard the tag noise, which is now, huh. you hear that noise, someone goes, huh. and what it signals is that every wrestler has to get in the ring and just start beating everybody else up. It's becoming more and more obvious every single week. We have now entered the law of diminishing returns. And also, given everything I just said about the Dark Order and the Lucha Express, I'm very sorry, but it's a down. Even more so, because the Dark Order beat the Lucha Express here. That is not the way I would have gone. But you know what? I don't even care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Because all I do care about is what happened afterwards. It was the best thing so far in AEW history, and I mean it. As Grayson and Uno were saying to Marco Stunt, hey man, do you want to be in our group? And he was like, no, not really. You look a bit like you're into s and and I don't want to do that. The Dark Order then started to beat up Jungle Boy and they also started to beat up Marco Stunt. And it was like, oh my gosh, somebody needs to come out there. Somebody needs to save these two there. But boys, they're not even grown men. And then it happened. Finally, finally after what, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 weeks, however long it's been, it's not just an up. It's a damn Jurassic up. This was like a phoenix rising from the ashes or a dinosaur finding a time machine and getting in said time machine and coming to the year 2019, which is probably a movie that will be on Disney Plus soon. Anyway, the point is Luchasaurus is back and he stormed into the ring and he kicked everybody's ass. He saved his dino buddies and honestly, who knew the one thing that professional wrestling was missing was dinosaurs. I didn't, but now I have been educated and now I am a happier and I am a better man. Luchasaurus, you are the flipping best. Welcome back. And now you know what we do, or no, you don't know, it's the first time we've done it, but let's all sing the Jurassic Park theme song. Da -da -da. No, let's not do that. Finally, finally, here is some exclusive footage of me reacting to Luchasaurus's return. Wait a minute, wait a minute, he's back! He's back, he's flipping those. Penguins are better than dinosaurs. We do get some very odd matches in AEW sometimes. It's a bit like wrestling lottery. You just pick some numbers, you go to the ring, and you see who else is gonna turn up. Because following this was Sean Spears, versus Peter Avalon versus Darby Allen. However, it did work. 
It all tied in. Get him up. This was more of an angle than an actual fight, which is the kind of thing that all elite wrestling does need. So I thought it was quite smart because halfway through, who would come down to distract Sean Spears and brawl with him to the back? Of course, it was Joey Janela. So now we know that that feud is going to continue. And then back in the squared circle, just as Peter Avalon was trying to get some offense using Lever Bates as interference, Darby Allen was too smart for that. He hit Peter Avalon with a cutter. He hit him with a coffin drop. He got another win for the good guys. And that would have been fine, but again, Angle. Afterwards, he simply got on a microphone, he looked into the camera, and he went, John Moxley, I accept. So in short, who had the year 2019 for where a wrestler would lose an eye, or lose an ear, or would lose a finger, or would lose a hand? Because how on earth are we going to be able to get through John Moxley versus Darby Allen, especially in an All Elite wrestling ring, without someone just, I don't know, imploding? from the inside. Hands up if you're scared, and oh yeah, that is happening next week. Genuine reason to tune in. Following this, we had another squash match between Nyla Rose and Danny Jordan, and it followed the exacted routine that you would expect. Eventually, Nyla Rose was able to get out of the way of any attacks that were being thrown her way. She hit the beast bomb, and it's also kind of where we get into, although AEW is a new promotion, we also have to look at some things and go, hmm, what's going on there? So down. There was nothing wrong, but I do feel like we're missing certain information or certain details when it comes to characters like Nyla Rose. Like, why is she wrestling? What's her aim? What does she want to achieve? How did she get into the business to begin with? Like, I can kind of figure out that you can destroy somebody in the ring. That's implied just by looking at you. But outside of that, I know nothing and I need to care and I need to be able to buy in. It's something really that AEW needs to start doing more of. Hence why we've got to this moment. And some updates were next. Dustin Rhodes is still going to be out of the ring for a few more weeks as he rehabs his hand. And you know when he does come back, he's going to kick the inner circle's ass. We're also getting some crazy like Diamond Battle Royal next week. It's going to have 12 people in it. And whoever are the last two will then face each other on the following week's episode of Dynamite. And if you win that, you get a special sparkly ring. Probably then have to go to the depths of Mordor to get rid of it, but I actually think this could be a good idea. Like if we put 12 people in this that need a bit of a rub and need a bit of a shine, and probably make a heel win it, and they can just go, oh, look at my great new piece of jewelry, and really rub that in your face, could be something in it. I will watch. Brandy Rose and Awesome's Kong's quest to just get all the hair in the company then followed. And I can kind of dig that, I can understand. In fact, if you want to make me a wig, using all the hair that you do get, I ain't gonna be mad at it, but as I said before, somehow, it, I'm, I'm, I'm so perplexed by this, and I'm so confused, it's made me wanna see where it's gonna go. When does that ever happen? Give it an up. Ali was being interviewed saying that she was ready to make the jump from AEW Dark to AEW Dynamite, but unfortunately you didn't get very far, did you? Because again, Kong and Brandy were out, and they were beating her up, and cutting her hair and eating it, didn't eat it, but you know, putting it in the little purse thing they've got, maybe, they just really like hair. Mm. And then the best sh happened. That's right, I said sh Everybody on AEW says sh So when something's good, I'm going to say sh too. Give it a sh up. Just enough. It was the fallout from Cody Rhodes versus Chris Jericho. And I tell you, while I massively respect wrestlers in 2019 and what they put their bodies through, the flips, the dives, the sheer violence, we see week on week. If you give me a good story and you give me a good narrative and you make me all emotional, I will get very, very excited. And that's what happened here. This is just such a good story. Jericho was out first being his usual self, which means he was a massive dick, saying that he deserves all the thanks in the world. When the fans did start thanking him, he said, no, I want it from people that I actually care about. Nice. We then got a spot that AEW loves as much as the word sh because the lights went out and Cody Rhodes' music started to play. But we didn't get the fallen hero instead. MJF came out and he got booed out the arena. He has surely proved now that he is money and he explained to us all why he did what he did at full gear. It essentially is this. Ever since he met Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes has been pretending he's going to be a big teacher and a big influential model to MJF, but he knew it was all a pile of crap and really what Cody wanted to do was hold him down and keep him under his thumb. Okay, I can understand that. Not every narrative in professional wrestling has to be like Shakespearean levels of good. It makes sense. MJF is an arrogant moron and that's what he thought of Cody Rhodes, although we know that Cody Rhodes had his best interests at heart 
And now they're going to have a big fight. MJF and Jericho then got into it, and that was both half parts brilliant and half parts awkward. They were basically arguing about whether he should or shouldn't be in the inner circle. But Jericho saved the whole thing where he said, you know what, MJF, I basically think you want to be me, especially because 25 years ago, your parents probably got horny when watching WCW Saturday night when they did indeed see the Ayatollah of Rock and Roller take on Cuban 2 Guerrero. Then we had a hoovy chant. This is why scripted promos need to be pushed to one side and we should just let wrestlers talk. When stuff like this comes out, they put smiles on everybody's faces. It turned out that they were working in cahoots though and it all built up when it looked like they were gonna call each other an asshole but instead said the biggest asshole in all of all of Eat Wrestling was of course Cody Rhodes. You know who didn't like that? Cody Rhodes. You know who came out? Cody Rhodes. You know who is awesome? Cody Rhodes. He made a beeline for MGF and after he got a few strikes and he then went after Chris Jericho. And yeah, I know they screwed up the first power slam attempt. Who cares? I don't care. I only mention it because if I don't, all the comments are like, why didn't you mention the screwed up power slam? Everybody makes mistakes. They rectified it and it didn't hurt nothing. There was also another twist in the tale though, because after all those videos that we've seen, Wardlow finally appeared live in All Elite Wrestling and he took out Cody Rhodes, basically gave him an attitude adjustment, but then also took off his tie and choked him over the top rope. That is so smart because not only does now MJF have his own bodyguard, but he has this that weird relationship with the inner circle that you can play off should you see fit, which means you've got about 22,000 stories here that you can use and rely upon as and when you want to. That, my friends, is how you book professional wrestling. This is my favorite narrative that any company is doing at the moment too. It just it makes sense, it's consistent, and it makes me want to learn more. Also, Cody, he can't catch a break. He hasn't even got a friend, especially because think about it, when he goes home, he has to go home with the hair queen. And probably like, yo Brandy, what's the deal with the hair? Want to tell me? She's like, yeah. It's like, you know what, I don't want to talk about it. And from there, well, I'm scared, but I'm a big boy just gotten over a virus, which means, you know, I'm doubly strong today, but we did get Hangman Page versus Pack, and while of course it is getting an up, because in terms of the in-ring action, it was absolutely sublime, well, let's go. So yeah, this has nothing to do with the match itself, which was brilliant, and I really do think Hangman and Pack have incredible chemistry together. Felt a bit more rushed than their one at full gear, but it's the finish where we really need to get inside. Because I do believe we are now going 50-50 in AEW and I'm not used to it. And I also think given this feud, it doesn't make sense. Right now, these guys are like on the cusp of going after the world title. So you should have picked one and said, right, we're sending you to the moon. And to the other guy, like, don't worry, we'll get to you eventually. So if Hangman Page did win on Sunday, which he did, he could have got another win here. And he'd be like, oh my gosh, Hangman is back. I need to watch the Hangman. On top of that though, not only did Pac kick out of the Buckshot Lariat, which I thought was a big deal, but he hit the Black Arrow. He then hit the Brutalizer. And like I say, or like I've suggested, Paige tapped out. And I was scratching my head like a monkey. And also thought to myself, given everything I've just said, down. And I know I may be jumping the gun with this and the commentators did do a good job in saying, oh, it's the rubber match, it's the rubber match. But just something about it made me go, nope, this ain't working. Where's my button? Bing, there it is. Never watched ups and downs before when I give a down. I know some people won't like, I just vanish. Because if you are yelling at your screen, you're just yelling at an empty screen and that makes you look absolutely preposterous. I did enjoy the sheer mayhem that came off the back of this though. Up. We cut to the back and much like Joe Gomez and Raheem Sterling, and that was a very niche reference, the Young Bucks and Tito and Santana were just brawling with each other like they didn't give two hoots. It was an amazing moment where a door got kicked open and Orange Cassidy was just standing there. The crowd went wild for that and Ortiz kind of crept up to it and slowly closed it. And within this moment, I think we can all agree this proves you can mix comedy with a serious angle. Because that's exactly what we did here and it made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Eventually they did make it to ringside, but it did not go well for Matt and Nick Jackson because one, Nick had his poor leg worked over again, and two, Matt got thrown through the stage. That's becoming like a weekly thing when Ortiz and Santana are around. Brandon Cutler ran out to try and help, but he also got waylaid, and the only reason this stopped is because Private Party were also out there and they were able to chase away the proud and the powerful. It also ties into the fact that those two teams are gonna have a match next week, but we also have the added, huh, that the Young Bucks and Ortiz and Santana need to settle their beef. This is probably gonna end up with some like four-way tag team match that has no rules, but you know it will be fun. Mostly though, the former LAX do look like absolute killers right now, which actually ties into my next point. Because yes, it was main event time, and it was, well, it was interesting. 
Let's do it. It was Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara taking on SCU, and my first question was, why? Within the inner circle, as I've just alluded to, we do have Ortiz and Santana. They've been busting chops. They've been beating everyone. Surely you would give them the opportunity. I understand you can say, oh, it's Chris Jericho pulling rank. I just don't see Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara as a tag team who have done enough to have a tag team title shot. That's just what I think. There's the downside of making sure that wins and losses do, man. Nerds like me pick up on it. And well, we start being nerds. Furthermore, the finish, what is happening? Truly, we do have an epidemic on our hands. Now, before we get there, much like the pack and page thing, I want to talk about the match itself because my word was it like a lot of fun. The SCU especially are a great tag team. I'm never going to rag on that. I did have a good time, so that gets an up. But once again, on a wrestling show, somebody used the most devastating move in all of professional wrestling, the surprise roll-up to get the win. Now, within the world of the story, I credit Scorpio Sky for watching every single show there is and going, man, I just got to roll someone up from nowhere and I'll definitely win. But again, that's in my world, not in the wrestling world. No one is actually saying that on TV. It's just too much. It really is. It's become too much. I know it's not really fair because this is WWE's fault too. But as a wrestling fan, I am perplexed. And yeah, don't get me wrong, because it was Scorpio Sky doing it to Chris Jericho, Le Champion, it was absolutely massive. And is Chris Jericho's first ever like pinfall defeat in AEW, but I just, like I say, I'm really, I'm just confused. It's like a cop-out. It feels like a cop-out. It's like, well, we don't want anyone to win with their big move, so we'll just do this so it's a bit like a fluke. Sorry, friends, that's a down. And does that mean the Scorpio Sky gets a title shot now? I'm all right with that, by the way. But again, it left me with too many questions, and usually I don't want these kind of questions. I just want to be intrigued as opposed to going, hmm, like a mole, I've got my mole face on. Credit to Chris Jericho, who threw a tantrum at the end of AEW, like he actually was back in WCW in the late 90s, if you remember that. He even got a steel chair and started hitting the steel barrier, which is the most pointless thing a human being can do. But it was an odd ending. I say that, it was an odd ending, not really the, oh, I want to see what's going to happen ending that I'm used from Dynamite. And that was basically me having a breakdown. So while it certainly wasn't a bad show, especially because damn Luchasaurus came back and that was the greatest thing that's ever happened in my entire life, and I mean it, did feel like it was a little, just a little bit lower than the ones we've seen before. And that's okay. I don't need a five star episode every single time. But I gotta be honest with you, and I'm nothing if not honest. But still, when Spinning Arrow comes, it gets an up again, mostly because of Luchasaurus. Go, go Jurassic Times. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. You probably disagree and now you're mad at me. That's what the comments are there for. Bald asshole, wanker, you can use a very UK-centric thing. Or, it is AEW, just call me a piece of sh**. Like, share and subscribe. Then you head over to whatculture.com, read yourself some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter, WhatCulture, WWE. And you watch more damn videos here on What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon What Culture. Thank you very much for watching. You take care of yourselves.